Hi, I'm Allison Meyer, and these are my friends Alexis Cruz, oh no, and Bailey Mount. <laughs> and this is Bad Fan Fiction Fridays, where we aim to bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly of fan fiction. And welcome back to another episode of Bad Fan Fiction Fridays. So, I have, obviously, Alexis and Bailey with me here. Alexis and Bailey, tell me, <laughs> what is the holiday that's coming up? Valentine's Day! The oh day my gosh, Valentine's you're right! Day. Okay, well tell me this, what movie is coming out around Valentine's Day? Fifty Shades Darker. Oh my gosh, you're right! Fifty Shades Darker. So today, <laughs> we decided that we were gonna do an episode on Fifty Shades of Grey. Because, get this, Fifty Shades of Grey started off as a fanfic, therefore qualifying as bad fanfic. <laughs> so we can talk about it on our Bad Fanfic Fridays podcast. She's so thrilled. They're, they're you so, hear her? She's so salty. So much, like, animosity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's just, let's get rolling. Bailey, I, you, I believe you have the origin story in full for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Fifty Shades Trilogy was originally developed from a Twilight fan fiction series. It was on fanfiction.net, and it was called Master of the Universe. God so, help us all. Instead of what we now know as um, Mr. Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele, it used to be Bella and Edward. The exact same setting. So it was it was an AU, which um, for those of you who are just joining us, it's an was it was it author's Al universe alternate, alternate universe, universe yeah. yeah, where Edward is a powerful billionaire business tycoon dude and bella is a recently graduated literature undergrad yeah so no vampires no werewolves just, just oh yeah get this her pen name was snow queen's ice dragon wow so it just it gets better and better and what it says on the Wikipedia page is, After comments concerning the sexual nature of the material, James removed the story from the fanfiction websites and published it on her own website, 50shades.com. Later, she rewrote Master of the Universe as an original piece and removed it from her website before publication. And? And so here we are. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> if this can become a book series, don't let your dreams be dreams. Like, this is the Just epitome of you it. can do it because this happened. But sometimes maybe you should take a step back and just not do it and spare the rest of us. <laughs> What's that quote? We spent all this time wondering if we could. We never wondered if we, we should. should. Wasn't that Jurassic Park? I think so. <laughs> Same Thank principle. you, Jeff Goldblum. Hey, he's back. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. <sighs> all right, so so obviously it, it all begins with Twilight, which is a monster of its own, even without being a fanfic. <sighs> so not gonna lie, I read all the Twilight series as a small child, and by small child, I mean I was like in middle school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think same. I was like sixth or seventh grade when I read it, and <laughs> I thought it was like the greatest thing ever when I first read it. Mm -hmm. And then of course I grew up and I realized. Oh God! What 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 was I thinking? Like no. Yeah. This is. <laughs> I need you guys to elaborate because I'm gonna just get really angry and start yelling. Okay. I mean, tell me the what is wrong with Twilight? Why why do we not like? Because I'm assuming we all in this room do not like it. I would like to just go on record by saying one of my current most long lasting friendships back home actually originated out of the fact that we were both reading Twilight. I never would have talked to this person otherwise. <laughs> but we were both reading Twilight. Uh huh. And they just hated it straight out the gate, and they were reading it because everyone else was. Oh. I remember, like, when I read it, it was. It wasn't me that read it, it was uh, my cousin that recommended it to me. And she's, she's, like, a year older, so we were, like, the same age group. And I was like, oh, okay. But for some reason, I could never get through the first Twilight book. And it took me, like, two years to finish the first one. But I was able to read New Moon in, like, a handful of sittings. And I think that was what, I don't know why, but I just couldn't continue reading after that. But I think it was because I was so mortified for, by the first book that I just couldn't handle the rest of the books with the exception of New Moon and my, like, young 14-year-old heart. <laughs> so I think the 
one of the main things other than the horrible writing in Twilight is the fact that it basically portrays a really not good relationship. Oh, just say the word. This is an abusive relationship. It totally is. I say, it out loud. say it out loud. Abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. No, here's the thing. You're saying it took you like a while to finish the books just because of the quality of the writing being so bad. I thought this was good writing. Yeah. I had to have been twelve or I had to twelve, thirteen, maybe maybe even eleven. And I tore through those books. Oh yeah. Like as soon as they were coming out, I was just like, Yeah, 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 more Twilight, please give me more. Yeah, like for some reason. Yeah, for me, like, the reason why I couldn't read the first book was it was so boring to me for some reason. And, like, I honestly can't remember why it was boring to me at the time, but, like, now that I'm older, I'm just like, yeah, it's just a boring book because Bella's a bland-ass character. And then Edward is just like, yo, for some reason, I think you're hot, and let's get together because this is fun because I'm old and you're young, yay. I thought it was romantic. Yeah, because it's I like, actually oh, did. he's a vampire, and he wants her, but he can't have her, so he pushes her away, but she wants him. And I thought that was normal. Yeah. yeah I thought that was healthy, and I thought that was okay, and it was only until like, I grew up, and I looked back, and I was like, you know, he did a lot of weird things. Like, that in the beginning of the do. book, like, he's stalking her. Yeah, he straight up stalks her because he'll, he'll be, like, outside her window, outside her home. No, he wasn't outside. At oh, one then point, he was, like, outside. I came in, in yeah, I watched you go in. sleep, you... and she was like... Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's hot. Yeah. Watch so, me sleep. Watch me sleep. And then somehow get in bed with me as if that's, yeah, that's a problem. Watch me sleep. Be over-possessive of me and, you know, the equally hot <laughs> werewolf boy that is also attracted to me. Watch Class me sleep. Classic case of the protagonist having people attracted to her for no reason. Almost like a Mary Sue, except she can't do anything right. Yeah. And a lot of the hate. A lot of the hate for Twilight, actually, now that I think about it, was towards Bella, for whatever reason. Oh, well, obviously. I mean, she, she, she's I know. the woman in the yeah. relationship. Obviously, everyone's going to hate sad. her. Uh, she was the there's woman. There's nothing wrong with Edward. Why would there be? He's Edward perfect. Edward sparkles. He's perfect. <sighs> he sparkles like a Mr. Clean commercial. He is. He's the so epitome. shiny. He sparkles. <laughs> Don't say shiny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I not be able to use the word shiny? Because I just think of Ma. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, but, like, Mr. Clean has an ass. Like, he could dance. Well, now he does in that Super Bowl commercial <laughs> that came out for, like, okay, whatever. Whatever. It's abusive. Yeah. And so many girls our age listened to, listened, I guess, whatever. They read it thinking it was okay and that this was love and this was romance. So then when Fifty Shades came out, oh, God. It was revolutionary. It was revolutionary. You could read porn in public and people wouldn't know it was porn because it didn't have a long-haired muscle dude on the cover. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. I don't know why, but it was fine. It was so weird how fast it caught on. It was like a fever dream. I mean, it was probably because... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, because it was, like, taboo, and I think a lot of what we talk about is the fact that people do things because they're like, oh, we shouldn't be doing them, so let's do it. In public. In public. <laughs> Actually, we're not going to talk because we read fan fiction in public. This is true. I mean, but the thing is, you don't know what the person's reading when they're just reading a fan fiction on their phone. But Fifty Shades, right. everyone knew what it was at that point. So if you saw someone reading it in public, you were like, oh, you're nasty. I oh. feel like it's because when we read fan fiction, it's usually on like an online platform. So no one really knows what's happening. But if it's a book, that's when people ask you. That's when it, it has some sort of a legitimacy to yeah. it, because it's like, oh, it's published. Like, it's gone <coughs> through review. It's been edited. So it, there's an assumption that, that it's going to be, to some extent, good. That but how could it possibly make it? Literature. How did it make it through these hoops? How did it make this jump from oh, fanfic yeah. to popular? I mean, I can only assume that's because it was so popular oh, as my. a fanfic, and then someone for God. Oh, I don't even know why, but um, decided that, oh, this is getting lots of clicks and views and stuff and should profit off that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you know what everyone wants. They Porn. want power, profit, and pleasure. I learned that in class the other day. Anyway. <laughs> College <laughs> teaches you But um, But, yeah, so I feel like that's, that's just... I think yeah. my main question is, like... Because it went through so many loops, like it went on hoops, hoops, loops. It went on like a fan fiction site, and mm -hmm. then they someone took it down, and then she had to put it up on her own site, and then she took it down because someone bought it, you know. And even 
And it's just like, you bought it, why didn't you check it out and make sure it was written well? Or have other people, like, copy edit it, you know? <laughs> You'd think. I think it wasn't the quality of the content, it was the content itself. It was just about porn. Twilight got published. Like, it wasn't good writing. The writing is not perfect. We, I think we can all agree that it definitely falls under our bad fanfiction category because it is bad fanfiction. Fan fiction. Yeah. But the thing is, it, it was the porn. It had to have been the porn. It couldn't have been anything else. But one only yeah. has to wonder, why? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't even good porn. I mean, I read all three of them. I don't know if you guys read... No. I read books. the plot summary. No, which yeah. we've read the plot summary. Which, yeah. you know, it does not get into the whole... It says, they had sex. And then some other stuff happened. And then they had sex. And then that's it. I mean, like... like from what I've read from the plot summaries, does it sound like they even have s sex even all that much it's once it gets started it's actually almost like page to page sex Why? to be completely honest the first book once it finally kickstarts which i guess this could classify as a slow burner because it takes forever to start but once it starts it is page to page sex scenes like okay. wall-to-wall -wall sex prose well how about we go over the plot summary some more for people who like myself and Alexis have Her not pure? actually read the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, as our resident expert, give as us our the sinner. plot summary. Oh, as our resident sinner. Oh boy, okay. So, first book, Fifty Shades of Grey. Anna, her journalism friend, gets sick and says, I can't do this interview. Which, first of all, journalism notwithstanding, that's a complete breach of ethics. Just cancel the interview because you say you're sick, okay? whatever anyway so anna goes and she has all the questions and she is so awkward you're actually stumbling through the pages right along with her like it's it's painful you get secondhand embarrassment whenever she Aww. speaks and it's all in her point of view by the way so you're really deep in her head it's not it's awkward <laughs> and she meets christian gray and he is all of a sudden completely weirdly enamored by her much like edward is with bella with our awkward ass bella yeah and then he goes he starts showing up everywhere she is. Stalker. And they start having this weird relationship, and he goes, oh, I don't do the girlfriend thing. I don't do romance. And she's like, okay, then what do you do? And she finds out that he fancies himself to be a dom. Which, quote, unquote. Quote, unquote. Biggest air quotes. And <laughs> says that he wants to enter a BDSM relationship with her. And being a 20-year-old literature undergrad, she somehow doesn't know what any of this means at all none of it so eventually they enter this sexual relationship but it ends up turning into something very air quotes romantic and he starts falling for her and they use the word vanilla a lot which is just another thing that's also really annoying and that's just the first book oh wait no at the end of the first book she goes why do you want to punish me show me how bad it can get and then he beats her with a belt and then she's just like i don't want to do this and then, anymore and then she's like okay you know You've done a lot of weird things, but this is the weirdest thing. I can't do this. I mean, sure, you've stalked me, and you're trying to get me to sign away my rights. Yeah. And Which we'll talk about that. Oh, wait. We'll talk about contracts and BDSM relationships, but oh my god. <laughs> it's so bad. And that's the first book, All people. Right, so then moving on to the second book, which is also, also getting a movie, as we talked about. What's that one about? Mm. There's less sex in this one because they're actually trying to have a semblance of a plot. Oh. So, Anastasia gets a job, and the boss is totally hitting on her all the time. You mean harassing her? Yeah, <laughs> totally harassing her, and she's just brushing it off, because she's like, you know, whatever. Because she didn't take the, se the sexual harassment orientation. Or because she doesn't seem to notice what... She doesn't seem to care, obviously, if she's entered this relationship, whatever. But... Then Christian's like, yeah, he, she, he's totally hitting on you. This, this isn't okay. And while all of this is happening, one of Christian's former subs shows up and starts stalking them. This woman has a gun and she breaks into the house. Actually, she might still have a key. I don't know. And it's really weird, and the whole time they're arguing about whether or not they want to be in a vanilla relationship. Or, cause she's At the end of the first book, she goes, you can't have sex with me anymore because that, that stuff, that's wrong. So, they decide to have a no-sex relationship because he wants to be with her for some reason, even though his whole characterization is, oh, chains and whips excite me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and then you get to meet the woman who introduced him to the BDSM lifestyle, who turns out to be one of his mother's good friends who is 15 years his senior. 
And she started doing this to him when he was 15 years so, old. So she molested him uh -huh. as a child. Uh huh. Wonderful. Which is why he's so messed up well, on he's, the inside. I'm sorry, no, he's 50 shades of fucked up if you ask him. Quote unquote. Actual line. Uh, okay. And, then she, and then she gets pregnant at the end of the second book and he gets pissed. Was it the second book? I thought it was the third book. I'm she gets pregnant wondering. at the end of the second one. Oh, jeez. And it turns out he, the boss gets fired. Her boss gets fired and, like, thrown in jail. And he starts stalking her and wants to kidnap her. And she, he sabotages Christian's helicopter so it crashes and no one knows where he is. And he kidnaps Christian's sister. Oh! It's what? wild. No, it's, it's like wild. it's like Twilight where, like, what was that guy's name? Like, it was the blonde guy. James? Yeah, it was like James. Oh, James. And yeah. there's kidnapping. and Yeah, so yeah. it's... Just as over the top and incredulous as any of the Twilight books. And saying all this stuff out loud is making me realize what hot garbage I read. <laughs> That's hot garbage. I have, like, PTSD right now. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Okay, so let's move into the actual... Other than the overarching plot. Why, why is this bad? And, you know, the abuse and the overt not good... I don't know how to do words right now because I'm just... Uh. Wait, here's my question. Why are you so bothered? Why are you so angry, Allison? Why am I so angry? It's just, it's so <laughs> bad. And it's just like, <coughs> just from an objective standpoint, it's just not good. Like, I tried reading like the first page and I just got so annoyed of like Fifty Shades of Grey. I just got so annoyed first page like she's talking about like her hair and like she's just like oh yeah do, 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 do. oh my hair it's a mess where's my hair brush ba -do, ba -do, ba -do. my friend is sick her name is kate i'm so angry at her Me. and it's just like oh my god how right. yeah see like how <laughs> the only reason why i did it why <laughs> <laughs> she's coming in uh, the only reason why like i never got to read her why i didn't want to was because my older sister read it, and at that point, I was just like, no, 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 this is probably bad. Oh, did she like it? Yeah, she loved it. Of course she did. Yeah, she was, like, obsessed with it. She's, like, she's five years my senior, uh, and, like, that's what makes it weird. And again, <laughs> it's normalizing abusive relationships. No, and, like, it's just... And giving uh, a bad name to BDSM once. Yeah. Man. Those poor people. This explains why my sister fights with her boyfriend so much, and she, they're okay what? with it. <laughs> no, we've had conversations about her sister before, so sorry, but it makes sense why she would. Because she's reading it. Because we're living in a society that tells us that's okay for men to do these things! Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> but, Yike. like I was saying, <laughs> other than that, all that other stuff, <laughs> why is it a bad fan fiction? Bailey, I believe you have some quotes with you. Oh, yeah. Maybe you should start reading some of those off. I've never heard her speak like this. No. It's amazing. <laughs> this is just... It's because my face gets stuck hey, in this position because hey, I'm angry. Al. What? Would you say that Fifty Shades of Grey triggers you? Bailey! <laughs> Why did it sound like you went to like an Irish accent? It triggers Bailey. you, eh? Uh, would you say that it triggers you? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not funny, Bailey. Let's see. Let's get to the real funny stuff now. This is one, this is from one of the first times they have sex. Uh, this is, this is like a repressed memory. The more I talk about it, the more <laughs> I remember and the sadder I become. So, suddenly, he sits up and tugs my panties off and throws them on the floor. Pulling off his box of briefs, his erection springs free. <laughs> we need to insert that noise, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. Um, don't you like the butt drawer? <laughs> You know the butt drawer where all the butt plugs are that she doesn't know what a butt plug is. Wait, no, his his erection just sprang forth. This is another one. And this he is took off her panties. Five. I'm sorry. This is this is a different quote. I'm right. sorry. Oh, but, okay. Wait, he just says, Let me do you like the butt drawer? At one point when they're having a conversation, he goes, don't you like the butt drawer? The butt drawer? Yeah. I have a drawer specifically for butts. Let me see. Oh, here's one of these things. This is going to piss you off, okay? Oh, God. Quote eight. Christian says, Dr. Green is coming to sort you out. Why? Because I hate condoms. It's my body. It's mine too. Uh, it, it's all of her. It's all her body, not his. Oh my God! She starts taking. She starts taking um contraceptive injections so she can't oh. get pregnant because he hates using condoms. 
That he is... gives her a doctor and says, this is what you need to eat. You need to exercise, exercise and be like this. Yeah, wasn't that in the first book where he was telling her yeah. what to do? Here's the thing. Doms do take care of their subs in that way, but it's for their benefit. It's not for the benefit of the dom. It's keeping the sub in peak physical condition so that when they do scenes, the sub doesn't like, die on them. <sighs> I mean, like, either not way... Not for this! <laughs> either way, it just sounded like he's controlling her and like he's just controlling her agenda because he does all these things like in, in the book and in the movie he's like oh yeah i'm gonna buy you this laptop because your computer's down we need to talk blah blah, blah blah i'm gonna buy you this car so you can get to me and da -da -da. like it's just so <laughs> da -da 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 -da. and then she thinks this is okay and it makes her feel loved and valued i think we should talk oh. about her inner goddess that she always refers yeah. to oh yeah go for so it. here we go my inner goddess is doing the merengue with some salsa moves what? that's a real line the, another, mer another the merengue and the salsa are two different dances. I, I wouldn't know because I can't dance, but I, 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 <laughs> I took Spanish three and our teacher forced us to learn how to dance both merengue and salsa, and they're two different dances. I like grew up with Latinos, so yeah, that's like two different dances. <laughs> My inner goddess is beside herself, hopping from foot to foot. My inner goddess is doing a triple axle dismount off the uneven bars, and abruptly, <laughs> my mouth is dry. Wait, your mouth what? open isn't supposed to be open when you're doing gymnastics. That's bad. No, you it's her inner goddess. The thing is, her inner <sighs> goddess is, I guess, how Christian makes her feel by um, degrading her in this way. I, I want to say... She just, she's just like, oh yeah, it makes me feel sexy. I want to say that the author was trying to portray the inner goddess as like Aphrodite or something because fertility and like sex and stuff. But also, why? I think that's the, also, the overarching why? theme of this podcast. Why? 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 You ready for this line? No. Yeah. Line. No, well, wait. Okay, do you want me to do line three? Are we gonna do line three on this? Go for yes! it. Yes. Okay. Do you want to hear line three or line nine first? I'll surprise me. Okay. Here's line nine. Okay. He said such loving things today. Dot dot dot. But how long will he want to do this without wanting to beat the crap out of me? Oh, that is so like. But it's abuse. The but there's she no, says it so normally. There's no, like, flares. There's no warning signal. She's just like, yeah, this, this is totally chill. Like, but he's just going to you want to hit me, like, that's fine. She's totally brainwashed. Another line. Line 48. Christian, you are the state lottery, the cure for cancer, and three wishes from Aladdin's lamp all rolled into one. How? Even though you beat me with the belt, and I'm like, no, I don't like it. And then I'm just like, no to anal fisting and what are butt plugs. Anal fisting. <laughs> Strike it out. <laughs> it's just I love how also I love how she says um show me the worst show me how bad it can get and he's like oh okay I'm gonna hit you with a belt hurt to dirt when he could he could have done a lot worse the anal fisting for starters yeah. <laughs> it's so bad but you know I guess even in something like this you can only go so far yeah Al what Al what Al Bailey <laughs> he reaches between my legs and pulls on the blue string oh. what and he gently pulls my tampon out and tosses it into the nearby toilet. Holy fuck. Sweet mother of all. Jeez. That's her saying the words, right? Yeah. It's all in her head. Okay, yeah. I mean, I... Is she supposed to be, like, having an orgasm from him pulling out the tampon? She has an orgasm when he looks at her, okay? Oh my god. It's Part one of those. Part of me is just like, what kind of tampon was she using? Because I don't know any tampons that have a blue string. Yeah, Me they're neither. all white. <laughs> but it doesn't get it doesn't get much better than that. Like all those are the best lines. Like these ones are just, you know, just all bad, but those are Oh. Those are the most noteworthy of the worst. Especially for this podcast since we're going to talk about, you know, abuse. The abuse. All right, so speaking of abuse, so <coughs> as Bailey brought up, there are some problems with the BDSM scenes in 50 Shades of Grey. Bailey, would you care to elaborate? I feel like this is just all me. Well, <laughs> you're the one I read. It was Alexis, yes, and I now know. it's your I'm, turn. I'm hot garbage, okay? This is just you're the hottest of garbage. Now go. Y'all called me garbage too. <laughs> you're trash. So, long story short, Fifty Shades of Grey was pawned off as a BDSM story. Christian Grey was described as a dominant, and he had a contract that he was trying to get Anastasia to sign so they could have a completely sexual, non-romantic relationship. And the thing is, this isn't a BDSM relationship 
at all. The BDSM community actually was super pissed off by how this was portrayed, and they had protests. And the thing is, when you have a community that prides itself on its secrecy and its very close-knit, if you get them mad, then you're sitting there reading Fifty Shades of Grey, and across the street, you'll see somebody in, like, the leather gimp costume from Pulp Fiction protesting and saying what you're reading is wrong and damaging to the already bad perception of that person's lifestyle. Yeah. It's weird. It's totally wrong. <laughs> so, so like, give us examples, like, from, from the book that you can think of. Um, let me see. Well, first of all, there's the fact that they're even having sex at all. I mean, most BDM setups between the dominant and the submissive, they don't even have sex a lot of the time, because BDSM focuses on scenes. It's very much a power play thing. It's a sort of, I guess it would be emotional. I don't know. It's an exchange. That like, when you say scenes, like there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. Okay. There's, that's what all of the, that's what the arsenal of tools in the fucking playroom is for. Like all the flogger and all that stuff you see in the movie. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is just used for scenes. They usually don't end up having sex at all because it's supposed to be something deeper than that. The experience is supposed to be something else. Okay. So they almost consider sex to be a trivial thing. Yes, it can be a part of it, but it's not something they consider necessary, and it's not something they even really do that much. So long story short, or TLDR, it's like super intense foreplay, and then... And then yeah. you didn't talk about aftercare, though. Yeah, and then aftercare. aftercare. Yeah, there's aftercare, people. There's aftercare. There's no aftercare in Fifty Shades of Grey. All of you who read this and then you went out and you bought your Fifty Shades of Grey BDSM merchandise they started selling, you're doing it wrong. There's, oh my goodness. So basically what aftercare is, I've read up on this a lot because I wanted to do an article about this because there's actually a BDSM community in Long Beach. Which I Not didn't, surprising, I didn't but. expect. <laughs> Professors tell you weird things in conversations and then you do research and then you go, this seems dangerous. Let's not do that article. Yeah. So, <laughs> going back. Aftercare, scenes are pretty intense. And, obviously, the sub has a lot going through their head. And they basically aren't themselves like how they are on a normal day-to-day -day basis. They're existing for a different reason. And it can really mess with them. Mm -hmm. So, aftercare is essentially bringing them back into their body and making them themselves again. It can be anything from sitting down, cuddling, watching a movie... To just anything simple like making them food and wrapping a blanket around them and showing them memes. Yeah, <laughs> memes. <laughs> I just, I just, I just hung you from the ceiling, like from the rafters. Check out this sweet meme. Are you okay? Check out have Salt you, Have you watered yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. And there's none of that in Fifty Shades. In the movie, there's actually a scene where um, he comes over to her house, spanks her, and then leaves. Yeah, it wasn't he just like, oh, I gotta go to work, and that's, bye. And that's the first time he's done something like that to her? Mm -hmm. At all? So, in the book, when he leaves, she has a breakdown. She starts crying, and she's upset, and she feels worthless and not herself, and it's bad. It's super bad. And that just shows you how important it is, and that's why people in the BDSM community got pissed. Like, there are articles upon articles about this, because they got furious, and they don't, they don't come out very often. I mean... To, like, add to that, because, you know, I'm, like, sociology and, like, study society and people, like, there's actually a lot of articles on BDSM and if Fifty Shades, like, brought it up for certain people and if it, if it, um, correlates to, like, bad abusive relationships, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. And it's, like, I kind of want to look into it more. Be like, yo, sociology, this is awesome. Like, look into the, like, sneaky sneak. Yeah. <laughs> no, sneaky it's, sneak. <laughs> it's totally fun to read about this stuff because you don't think it affects you. You think it's harmless. But when it's on such a global scale and yeah. you have so many different people being affected and doing things because of it, yeah. it gets dangerous. It does. I mean, I like, think this is the only dangerous fan fiction we've Especially ever had. since people are, like, getting this merchandise and saying, oh, this is so fun, and then they're doing it wrong, and they're hurting themselves, yeah. and it's just, like... And any 20-year-old Johnny Fuckboy can walk in off the street and go, I'm not abusive, I'm a dom. Yeah. Yeah. And... It's like, no. No, sir. No, no. you are not. You're you, an abusive sir. asshole. Yes. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, <sighs> Okay. This is, it's very warm in this room. Yeah, well, 
you know. We're sinning. That's why it's warm. We're in hell. It's heavy, <laughs> it's heavy with the weight of our sins. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. So moving on to a slightly more lighthearted topic. Mm. Since we, uh, this is just <laughs> dark. Talking it's, about this hurts it's me. It's dark in hell. Um, People are going to think I'm a sex pervert. I just like to read. <laughs> So, as you may or may not know, there are fanfics of Fifty Shades of Grey, which is, you know, funny because it started off as a fanfic and now there's more fanfic of the fanfic. fanfic exception. Oh, God. <laughs> but um, it's interesting because while a lot of it is just like, it's schmutty, 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 schmutt, and it's like, um, hmm. Or, or it's like the the aftermath of the trilogy, and then it's like them doing family stuff, I guess, or whatever. Mm -hmm. There is, however, I found one fic on AO3. It's called He Wants a Fight, Now He's Got One by Hey Macarena. <laughs> um, <laughs> and basically, it's, it's, it's Fifty Shades of Grey, except that, here's the summary. Kate has finally gotten through to Anna. Christian's abusive. Anna works her way toward escaping him, and after bonding with his employees and his exes, she destroys him. It's a fix-it fic, but better. I read the entire thing. It's only, like, four chapters long. It's, like, only 3,000 words. And, like, even though I haven't read any of the books or anything really up, other than, like, my secondhand knowledge about it, I was just like, yes girl power coming together to destroy this horrible man <laughs> and then it was just like thank you to whoever wrote this hey macarena this one's for you props to you <laughs> but on the other hand there's there's fix like i love my murderer by pumpkin x spice <coughs> i love my murderer is a 50 don't, shades of gray don't. fan fiction <laughs> Inspired by what could have happened if Christian Grey's sexual deviance veered more toward the twisted and the depraved, rather than Anastasia slowly healing him from past trauma. Instead, Anastasia is sucked into the twisted world of Christian Grey and his perversions nearly cost her, comma, her life. So he's a murderer now? Yeah, and, um, yeah. I mean... Also, don't associate my love of pumpkin spice with bad things. <laughs> <laughs> you see her pointing at me? I mean, like, some of the tags are graphic depictions of violence, major character death, hopefully it's him, because uh, <laughs> I haven't read it, and a uh, rape non-con. Oh my god. And for those who don't know what non-con is, it means non-consensual. <laughs> which means rape, basically. <laughs> which is a whole genre, disturbingly, of erotica and fanfiction within itself. Yeah. Oh, man. Because people like to draw the line between the non-con and the rape stuff, like there's actual rape, but they say the non-con is when the person starts off going, oh, you know, I'm going to pretend to say no, it's going to make it extra kinky. Extra fun, extra but wise. Guys, there's a lot of problems guys, in fan fiction. No means no. Oh. oh, boy. Lord. And then there's other stuff, like I think I mentioned to you guys earlier, canon rewrite without Anna because I love stories <laughs> like this. <laughs> Madeline Barnes walks hard, just as sharp, and doesn't take any shit. When she interviews billionaire Christian Grey, she finds him handsome, powerful, but nothing close to intimidating. She isn't his type, he likes them easy. But when Grey <laughs> finds himself blindsided by Maddie's cool indifference to him, he wants something new. A challenge! But he is unaware that Maddie is going to teach him a thing or two. It's called Wicked Deeds by Chloe M Magia. Mag Mag Magia? Is it no, a self-insert, or is it an OC? It's an OC, it looks like. Although we all know that, that OC is Our usually... Our glorified self-inserts. Yeah, basically. So you gotta wonder why people want this. Why? Why do you want to self-insert yourself into this story? Why? Because their lives are boring and they want the sexy sex. That's why she... That's why E.L. James wrote this. <laughs> she said she was going... She... In an interview, she said that she was going through a midlife crisis. This is the product of a midlife crisis. Wonderful. That explains why the grammar and the prose was terrible. Because mm -hmm. she's in her midlife crisis or just... I, what? Yeah, the mid... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> midlife crises make you write horribly, yeah, so... Hot no, flashes make Hot flashes, like, ah! Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> right, just right, 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 and then, of course, there's always the crossover fix, where I believe we explained earlier, where it's you take um, one 
canon universe and then flip flop it with another canon universe and it's all sorts of weird like there's sherlock on here no there's um what the, what 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 is it called the titan one is that the titan yeah i know yes. <laughs> are they <laughs> fucking titans <laughs> <laughs> what's happening <laughs> Yeah, Titans don't have genitals! <laughs> How does this work? Uh, apparently it's a, a Levi or Levi... Uh, Levi. Levi Aaron Yeager fic. You just capture a Titan, you tie someone up, and you put him in the mouth of the Titan. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's no genitals. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think this did? Do you think this helped improve her sex life? Do you think maybe that's why she wrote it? Maybe in her dreams. Yeah, maybe in her dreams. Do I don't think... She is married. Oh. Yeah. But I think the reason that you write fanfic is because it's stuff that you can't enact in real life. Or that you would want to, but no, you can't. I mean... Logistically. Yeah, to add to that, like, our co-worker's mom writes the things. <laughs> Should we talk about this? <laughs> if you listen, he'll get angry and it'll be my fault. It's just, we're not it'll saying names, problem. though. This is anonymous. We're not saying names. Uh. This could be off the record, but I don't know. No, it's not off the record. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> how about how about we just keep going? But yeah. What would that be like though to just walk into this house you share with another person and go, Hey honey, what you doing? Oh, you know, I'm just writing a book, sweetheart. And then, you know, some months later you go, Hey honey, your book sold. Can I finally read it now? Nah. And then you read it and you go, Honey. Honey. What the hell? What, what are you doing? I, um, am I not satisfying you? Has something happened? Why don't you talk to me? It makes me think of, like, that Key and Peele skit. Like, I forgot what the character's name is, but it's, like, the really big guy, and he's always talking about his, his fake sexual endeavors, and he's like, oh, sexually. Like, I imagine, like, that's how she felt. I have lots of sexy sex. Sexually. The way Anastasia talks sometimes, that's what you think, because at one point she goes, um... Kinky fuckery? No, uh, not, aside from that, it's like, um... My immortal, almost, with that yeah. scene where that scene where she's like, and he put his thing in my, you know what? It's kind of like that because at one point she goes, my um, inner goddess, <laughs> my inner goddess. At one point she talks about um Christian going down on her, and I don't know, the my stupid, Clitoris. It's that it's that stupid standard stuff where it's like, oh, you know, his lips trail down my stomach or whatever, and then they go straight for my, oh my, oh like my. she doesn't finish it. She just goes, oh my, or oh my god, or oh jeez. She has no agency, sexual agency over her own body. <laughs> she can't say vagina. Maybe that, that was the censorship. vagina is a bad word. Vagina is a bad word, but you can talk about his erection coming out like a jack-in-the-box. Wing! Kapow! Oh. Hits you right in the face. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Back to the crossovers, <laughs> Sherlock is a college graduate who no. shares a flat with his best pal. His best nope, pal. Don't, don't. They're, they're gal pals. John, <laughs> who is an aspiring doctor. Okay. Sherlock is confused about his future. He has studied chemistry, but is not <laughs> sure what to do next. He has not been involved romantically or sexually yet, awesome. and doubts he cares to be. But... Sorry, we had someone peeking into the room so and we, we needed to stop. Door. Things Watch change when one day he meets a famous actor, Richard Brooke, who stars in John's favorite medical drama. Who is Richard Brooke? Okay. Richard reveals him a secret. His real name is Jim Moriarty. <laughs> oh gosh. A string of events leads Sherlock closer to him, and he cannot deny he is so, so hooked. But what if Jim has more secrets, and a room with Sherlock is going to enter only to have his whole world turned upside down? It's a question. So Will he be able to stay? P.S. This room is not really the famous Mr. Gray's Red Room, if you if you needed to know. Uh, so so yeah. how is this a crossover? None of the know. characters are in there, so it's just a Fifty Shades of Grey AU. I guess. Also, I mean, it doesn't seem to have anything in common with... Oh, this is confusing. Do, do they meet Mr. Gray? Or? Yeah, I think it's just a Fifty Shades... Moriarty's gonna be like, oh yeah, I used to be a sub to Christian Gray, and I he feel screwed like this me up. Out of, oh, eh. it's... They put kind of parody, oh. but like, I don't know, like, it's weird because it's just like, do people think that, oh, if now things are sexy, oh, it's just like Fifty Shades of Grey, ooh, this is a crossover. Fifty Shades of Grey is what because it means to be sexy, Allison. <laughs> I mean, it got like over 600 hits, that's something. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just see a guy walking around with a gray tie, and he talks to you in his nasally congested voice, and just... So my all voice... Of a sudden, all of a sudden, you don't have panties, and it's super confusing, I guess. Okay, t- tell me about your, your problems with the casting for, for the movies. <laughs> Buddy, really? they didn't deserve this. This is another, how we were talking earlier in the podcast about how Bella got so much hate for no reason simply right. because she was the woman. Dakota Johnson has received, so she plays Anna. Right. She has received so much hate. It, it, it's really sad. And she's actually, she's really funny. It's, mm-hmm. So it's like equal to Kristen Stewart. She right? was in an SNL skit parodying Fifty Shades of Grey, actually. And it was funny. Uh, some, what, what was happening? Someone hit her and she looked at them and she went, I need you to hit me harder. <laughs> and it was funny. And that almost felt like what you should have seen in the film. It should have just been a parody. <laughs> because she's great. And so many people come after her. So yeah, so it is like what happened in Twilight where everyone was coming after the actors. Like, you're horrible. Like, you can't act. And then it's like, actually, they, they can. Yeah, and the thing is with the guys, they just obsess about how hot they are, how plain the women look. But the thing is, the way the stories are written, the women are supposed to be plain. That's their appeal. They're plain and they're not validated they're until the like really hot us. guy. Yes. I'm not plain. Fuck you. <laughs> Why well, are you supposed plain? To, to, to appeal to, like, you know, these tweens yeah. <laughs> who are going the through tweens. their I hate myself because I'm not good looking. We should talk about that. The tweens. This should not appeal to 14 year olds with self esteem issues. That's awful. I mean, well, Twilight did. Yeah. It was, I feel Ugh. like it was written. Like, for... all three of us read it. <laughs> so that's a sign. Oh, In our tween, tween name yeah. years. It was. I mean, because we wanted to. to relate with Bella because we're like oh I want to be in this hot relationship with this hot vampire yeah so I'm totally like her yeah. oh look at me tripping Whee! oh no help me oh Edward help me tripping does not make you endearing it just makes you hit the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah like yeah you know just bodies hit the I'm floor. a walking floor. I'm a walking disaster and let me tell you it's not attractive it's painful yeah but it's just the male actors just essentially the male actors get objectified yeah. And the female actors get objectified in a different way. They're made to feel worthless, and the male actors are meant to feel that their body is the only thing that's really worth anything. Like, Jamie Dornan, sorry, great actor, he was great in Once Upon a Time, shouldn't have been cast in this role. Didn't work for him. Wh- why? Because, um, Christian, I don't know, it's weird. It starts off as a physical thing, because Christian's supposed to be, like, all this lean muscle so think of like a jaguar or something at the predatory image he's supposed to be all lean muscle and jamie dornan just looked really skinny he doesn't look like he could overpower mm-hmm. anybody if anything he looks like he's going to be the sub he's a wee baby yeah if anything it looks like anastasia's gonna go oh, okay i'm gonna tie you to the bed and hit you with this thing <laughs> isn't it most bsm relationships it's the woman who's the the dom no isn't it well there's those that's I called dom dom like- Really? Yeah. Most media some relationships, the man is the dominant. Huh. But fem- femdom relationships are a whole different thing, and that would have to be a whole other podcast, but there's no way that's related to any fan fiction. Interesting. But, yeah. Femdom huh. turns into a whole different thing, and it's actually kind of misogynistic at some points. There's a lot of problems with it anyway. <laughs> okay, then. But that in the whole movie, he sounded like he was both parts congested and constipated. I'm Mr. Like, Gray. He was trying to get out of it. He's like, Mr. Gray, we'll see just, you now. The scene where he's like, I would help you out of that pretty dress and be pleased to find that you are naked underneath. <laughs> what what <laughs> was that scene at all? Like, that was, why is he just saying it like this? Like, he's a robot. They decided to have sex in the boardroom after she said she didn't want to do anal fisting. What? They were discussing the contract. Right. And they just decided to start having sex in the really dark boardroom. <sighs> None of the movie makes sense, and everybody knows it. All right, well, let's talk about the very last book, since there hasn't been a movie made for that. There's going to be, though. They've been doing back-to-back shooting, by the way. Back-to-back. So these actors have gotten no break from the kinky fuckery, quote-unquote. All right, tell us us about the third book. She gets pregnant. He gets pissed and thinks that she did it on purpose. There's no trust in this relationship, mind you. Again, it's like Edward and Bella when Bella gets pregnant for, like, no reason that makes any sense whatsoever. And he's Edward, a vampire and he's dead. And Edward's like, oh, no, I've, I've killed you. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian's like, oh, no, you've ruined my life. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, he comes back to their house. Oh, by the way, the end of the second book, he freaked out thinking that she was going to leave him, so he proposed to her. And she accepted because he was, she was like, he needs me. Ah. So there's that, ladies. Never do that. So, 
Then he comes back completely drunk and he goes, you're going to choose the baby over me and <laughs> leave me. And she's going, uh. she's going, no, but okay. So they don't talk to each other and weird stuff happens, but long story short, she has the baby. He decides that he wants to be a father. Oh yeah, her former boss comes back and tries to kidnap her and then she shoots him and he beats her up. Okay. And she's pregnant, so... Does, doesn't she shoot him with, like, the stalker's gun from the other yeah, book? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. There's so many things going I remember on. that from the plot summary. And That's, then yeah. it takes her being beaten severely and waking up in a hospital for Christian to go, I think I'm ready to be a father. <sighs> I think I actually love That's you. character development, kids. That's character development. I... It's okay if I beat you, but when someone else does it, babe, that's a real problem. Oh, no. And so, fast forward, they're married, and they have a kid, and she's pregnant again. He's fine with it this time. It might be his new kink, I don't know. I clearly remember, because I thought this was weird. Like, this whole book made me slightly, it made me uncomfortable. Okay. But this sticks in my mind. She's pregnant, like, I'm talking six months pregnant, so... You can see the baby, okay? It's noticeable. <laughs> and they have a playroom in, in their house. In their uh -huh. house that they have with themselves and their kid in the countryside or whatever. It's one of those pretty rustic mansions, whatever. They have a playroom. And he has her strapped to one of those crosses, like the X things that you always uh -huh. see in the stereotypical things. He has her strapped to that and they're just still doing at their, it they're still doing their quote-unquote bdsm stuff and she's heavily pregnant so i'm pretty sure that's really dangerous yeah apparently it's a thing though because pregnancy they, kink well i know that's a thing well yeah but what like they also kind of had a scene like that <coughs> in uh in uh mr robot like that tv series yeah. it was weird like it wasn't like super explicit but like it was hinted and like she was pregnant and she had like a like the um baby be like belly like it was pretty you had a baby in her in her uterus yeah like it's it there. Was rare but like you can see it and just, she's like doing this the thing is i don't know why pregnancy like sex with pregnant women makes me so uncomfortable because they're still the same person like having a child doesn't automatically make them a sacred vessel but it's still just it's like there's a tiny it feels like a violation there. I feel like oh I don't know like you should just be careful with maybe like wrong with I know the baby isn't in the vagina but like well here's the thing you can't even drink caffeine when you're pregnant so why do you think being strapped to a cross is good for you yeah but that's what ends up happening they stay together and everything's fine see I think the interesting thing about that is that I was it's a happy ending my yeah the thing is that everyone read it for like the kinky porn and yet they stayed for the happy ending where it's like it's supposed to be subversive mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be different and yet it still ends like every other romance novel they have a family what does happy. that say about us as as a society came for the poor and stayed for the abuse <laughs> came for the poor and hope they had a family oh, i think what it says about us is no matter how bad things get or how much other people hurt us if it gets to a point we always want a happy ending women even if it's not a real happy ending we're conditioned as women to just deal with it and to have a happy ending we want our storybook ending and that requires with two and a half children a two and a half children. two and a half where's the half the, the well the kids only five. six months so you know it's not full oh, of worms so, so still baking. it's a half yeah. still baking it's like that's like two and two thirds of a kid <laughs> yeah all uh, right well that just about wraps it up no allison but no, bailey has allison. something Al, what? Remember, we were gonna talk about it, guys. What? what? So, are we gonna go see Fifty Shades Darker? Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still haven't seen the first movie. I it's okay. We'll watch it in the office. <sighs> <laughs> what has my life come to? It, what is what is this? I mean, it uh, it'd be good. I know this is my job, but still, it'd be a good follow up. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know what? We're Fine. gonna go see it. We are gonna go see it. Oh, It'll just be us screaming in the back of the theater. Okay, but what day though? Because it's already showing. Because you know I know it comes out. We can figure that out later. Right now, I know it comes out Valentine's Day, but they're doing <laughs> pre-showings. You know what? <laughs> we can plan it later. But right now, I'm just gonna regret my choice in the future as a person. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> as a person who, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I don't like being in this fishbowl. A listener, listeners, the, there's a creep man staring into our studio. It's like Christian Grey. Gray. Which is appropriate. It's Christian Grey. <laughs> oh, God. Unless he knows we've been talking shit, and um, he is and, here. And he wants us to get off the air. <laughs> so I think that's what we're going to do now. Bye. So um, stay tuned for 
Ford whips and chains and excitement. Oh God. <laughs> Insert sound clip of Rihanna's S and M here. Thank you for listening to Bad Fan Fiction Fridays. To listen to more episodes, check us out on iTunes or any of your favorite podcast apps. As the title says, this podcast updates every Friday during the semester. Our multimedia manager is Allison Meyer. Music in this episode is from the YouTube Audio Library. This has been a Union Weekly production. Please follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Union Weekly.